Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me. For you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we will hear how Jesus brings life from death and how he brings hope in the midst of suffering. We begin this Mass as we do all of our Masses by calling upon the mercy of Jesus, by remembering that he wants to renew us in his merciful love. So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land and thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, 
that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their inequities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, our friend, friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. 
So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was there, still there where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord.
Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Last week I mentioned to you that I would be receiving prayer intentions so that remotely, but united spiritually, we could be joined together in prayer. Here's one prayer intention. I am writing you because in your email you stated if we had any intentions to pray for, we can email you directly. I have two of them, please. First and foremost, I work for a medical laboratory and we are currently handling and running COVID-19 tests for Northwest Indiana and some of the Chicagoland hospitals as well. I would like to ask for a prayer to keep all employees safe with the exposure of this virus. We are working 24 seven, trying our very best to process these specimens as quickly and accurately as possible so that we can provide the best care for our patients. With that being said, we must remain healthy in order to be able to be of service to others. Please pray for our health so that we can continue to work and diagnose the patients without delays. My brothers and sisters, this is heroism in action. This is confidence and hope that those who are working so hard to ease the suffering that we currently experience are united in prayer and are working heroically. She doesn't stop there. Secondly, I would like to ask a prayer for my son, soon to be born. I am currently 36 weeks pregnant. I have a scheduled C-section in April. Please pray for a safe delivery of my baby and that he is healthy. Thank you. Your prayers will be greatly appreciated. Health workers such as her, family members, people around the world are showing us acts of heroism and reaching out for prayer and support. And so we pray for her and we pray for all those intentions that have come to us. And we acknowledge in the midst of suffering, there is hope. And in the midst of what appears to be death, life may come. Today's gospel passage, all of today's readings, lend themselves to this deeper reflection on the meaning of hope in the midst of suffering and how Jesus pulls life from the midst of death. Now this is the second week in a row where we've had a miraculous occurrence, where someone who is seemingly beyond hope, the blind man, and this week Lazarus who has died, Suddenly, Jesus says, it's not because of sin, and it's not that I couldn't have intervened earlier, but today we hear him say, this illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And so what we hear is that Jesus has a plan for Lazarus. Jesus has a plan for the blind man, and his glory can shine through it. And so in the midst of suffering, we can see seeds of hope. And in the midst of death, we have hope for eternal life. And so this is one of just the most dramatic accounts in all of scriptures. This is Lazarus being raised from the dead. Martha runs out to meet Jesus. And by the way, I love this part of the scriptures because sometimes we think of Martha and Mary solely as 
the passage where Martha is worried about many things and Mary has chosen the better part. Well, this one, we have Martha coming out to meet Jesus directly, reaching out to him in love, knowing exactly where to go. She goes to the master, to Jesus. We've got lots of stuff to do, but we, like Martha, run to Jesus with our needs. Two words, remember them always. They show us Jesus' love. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now we might be tempted to ask ourselves, where is Jesus in the midst of pain and suffering? And the answer is he's right there with us. I mean, Jesus knew what was about to unfold. He revealed that the glory of God would come forth, but in that moment, he wept with Martha and those who mourned. And some of us may have tears, some of us may have anxiety, some of us may be uncertain, some of us may be needing the comfort of Jesus, and Jesus is with us. Jesus will weep with us. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus uses this to reveal and to have this deeper conversation with Martha, to give her a deeper insight and an opportunity to respond. So he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? That's the question Jesus asked Martha. It's the question he asks us right now. I mean, some people might be tempted to think, well, in the midst of this calamity that the world is facing, it must mean, like, you're, where's your faith? You know, how can what you believe about God be true? And the fact of the matter is, now more than ever is a time where our faith is right in the middle of that suffering, is right in the middle of where we are. And we've got an answer. We've got Jesus saying, anyone, even if he dies, will live if he believes in me. And so it's, it's not as if we haven't uh, the answers for the situation we face. We, we've got them, and they're, they're here before us, and Jesus wants to reveal himself to us in the midst of this. But he asks for this response. Martha says, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. She responds with faith. And in these days, it's an opportunity for us to respond with faith, to say, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe. Jesus then continues. By the way, this is one of the more almost comical lines in all of Scripture, but it's one you can go back to if the occasion calls for it. They, they try and dissuade him. He's going to go in there and somebody says, Lord, by now there will be a stench. <laughs> like, it's going to smell in there, you know. Uh, you sure you want to go in there? It's going to smell. By now there'll be a stench. It doesn't stop Jesus. Obviously, it doesn't stop Jesus. He goes forward. Lazarus come out, the dead man came out. Tied hand and foot with burial cloths his face wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said in, untie him and let him go. And so Jesus revealed his glory in the midst of this. Now, now notice, Jesus had just said, even those who die shall live. It's not that from this moment forward, Lazarus is experienced his ultimate resurrection. I mean, in his mortality, there will come a time where he will die, and then Jesus will raise him up in the resurrection as all of us who trust in him will experience that same reward. So it's not like he gives Lazarus immortality right then, but he gives him life. And as a result of that, the, this, this love that Jesus has shown and this miracle that has occurred permeates out and out and out, and we're told so many came to believe because of him. Going from death to life, that's what it means to be a Christian. We've got not just the answers for this, we've got a revelation of how this works. And so there are other belief systems that, that you know, might posit who God is and, 
and try and, you know, sort of philosophize a way to understand God. But ours is about a revelation of Jesus Christ, and ours comes right in the midst of our suffering. And we can say, where is Jesus in our suffering? He's right there on the cross with us. In our homes, we can find ways to remind ourselves of this fundamental truth. If you have a crucifix, put it in a place of prominence. Set up an area in your house. Put a candle by it, a Bible in the place. Have a place where you can come and pray and reflect upon the truth that Jesus died for us. In a particular way, as Catholic Christians, you know, we're known for the crucifix. So we, we share our great faith tradition with our Protestant brothers and sisters who, who oftentimes look at the cross, but it's an empty cross. It doesn't have the body of Christ on it. We proclaim Christ crucified and so when people say, where is God in my pain? Where is Jesus in my pain? We can say, he's right there. He is right there. Pope Francis, just a couple days ago, gave an extraordinary homily during what was called the Urbi uh, at Orbi blessing in St. Peter's Square. And he offered some perspective on how we can see in the midst of what might appear to be death and desolation and suffering, signs of hope and renewal, heroism and action. So to apply it to the gospel passage today, I'm gonna to share with you a few thoughts as we listen to our Holy Father, drawing the deeper meaning out of where we find ourselves now, seeing heroism and hope and unity and solidarity in the midst of this pandemic. Here's what he said. The storm, and he was preaching about the storm that rocked the ship that Jesus was in, exposes our vulnerability and uncovers those false and superfluous certainties. What does that mean? It means it's like this time can reveal to us that a lot of the stuff we thought we relied upon is pretty passing. It, it's not eternal. It, it's like a distraction, but it keeps us from thinking about the most meaningful things in our lives. And so he says, uh, around these superfluous things that we thought were certain, we have constructed our daily schedules, our projects, our habits, and priorities. It shows us how we've allowed to become dull and feeble the very things that nourish, sustain, and strengthen our lives and our communities. And so it means, like during this time, we can look and we can see we've held on to so many passing things. But Jesus wants us to hold on to those things that don't pass. And so this can be a time of deeper reflection for us as to what really matters. What's our response? The Holy Father calls out to God in these words, you are calling us to seize this time of trial as a time of choosing. It is not a time of your judgment, but of our judgment. A time to choose what matters and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. A time to get our lives back on track with regard to you, Lord, and to others. He says this is a time of judgment, but the judgment is ours. How will we choose to respond? How will we allow what the Lord did with, did with Lazarus to be manifested in our lives? To have people see what might have been a time of desolation as a time of hope and inspiration as the love of the Lord shines through and brings new life. The Holy Father gives us some examples. Remember that healthcare worker that I mentioned at the very beginning, 36 weeks pregnant, going in to make sure that we can get accurate and safe and speedy virus test, sacrificing herself. The Lord said, the Holy Father says, we can look to so many exemplary companions for the journey who even though fearful have reacted by giving their lives. Our lives are woven together and sustained by ordinary people, often forgotten people who do not appear in newspaper and magazine headlines, nor on the grand catwalks of the latest show, but who without any doubt are in these very days writing the decisive events of our times. Doctors, nurses, supermarket employees, cleaners, 
caregivers, providers of transport, law and order forces, volunteers, priests, religious men and women, and so many others who have understood that no one reaches salvation by themselves. It's not just about me and God. It's about how God uses me to bring life into the places where there's darkness. This is the second prayer intention that I received this week. An ER physician who's working around the clock, quarantining himself in the hospital to instruct student doctors in intubation and refit inhalators. This is, this is who we're asked to pray for. He is 64 years old and recovering from recent open heart surgery but cannot go home wasting travel time and fearing carrying the virus to his wife, children, and grandchild. Please include him and all responders in your prayers. Thank you most sincerely. As the Holy Father says, this 64-year-old doctor risking his very lives to help others help others while himself quarantined, uh, that's heroism, that, that's hope, that's action, that's response. Pope Francis says, in the face of so much suffering, we experience the priestly prayer of Jesus that they may all be one. And we talk about solidarity with each other, and now this is the time where that solidarity has been revealed to us if we choose to respond. Our people every day are exercising patience and offering hope, taking care to sow not panic, but a shared responsibility. How many fathers, mothers, grandparents, and teachers are showing children in small everyday gestures how to face up to and navigate a crisis by adjusting their routines, lifting their gaze, and fostering prayer. How many are praying, offering, and interceding for the good of all? Prayer and quiet service, these are our victorious weapons. Hear this once again from the Holy Father. Prayer and quiet service, these are our victorious weapons. Prayer and quiet service. I'm here preaching to you from the Holy Angels Cathedral, the Cathedral of the Diocese of Gary. Today in the Office of Readings that priests and religious pray, we had the first chapter of the book of Hebrews and revealed who the angels are. This is what we hear in scripture. Angels are ministering, ministering, ministering spirits sent to serve those who are to inherit salvation. Ministering spirits sent to serve. When someone does an act of charity for us, it's very common to say, oh, you are an angel. You know, you, the Lord sent me an angel. Now, are spiritual angels literally ministering to us right now? Yes, indeed. But our response, if we listen to the scriptures today and if we listen to what Pope Francis says, is to say, how can I be that angel? See, here's an interesting line. He says, um, as we reflect back, we are in these very days writing the decisive events of our time. In these very days, we are writing the decisive events of our time. So what does this mean? Like we're writing the history books right now. I mean, think about my parents who were from what they say the greatest generation, survived the depression, World War II. I was like five weeks old when JFK was assassinated. That's kind of like a, a, a marker moment for, for another generation. I. I was uh, a young adult at the time of 9-11, of and that was like the marker for, for, for me in so many ways and for so many of us. And you know, right now, we're gonna look back and we're gonna say, what was 2020 like? What, what happened? A and right now, we're, we're writing that narrative. Whatever that response is, we should all pray about it. What do we wanna look back at and say, you know, it was scary and it was frightful I lost a good friend, but the Lord got me through it. We went through gallons of hand sanitizer and prayed at home. I mean, 
There's all kinds of ways that this can play out. And for each of us, it's gonna be a little bit different. And I would just ask you as I'm doing right now to pray and say, Lord, how do you wanna use me right now? How, you know, is it calling a neighbor who might need some food and I have to be socially distant, but I can make the food and leave it on their door and give them a call and say, there's where it is. Is it calling somebody who I haven't spoken to a while? Is it supporting a healthcare worker? Is it praying myself like crazy because I just don't know what else I can do? But the Holy Father says, prayer and quiet service. In our families, we can come together more closely. It's not that hard for us to do the simple things we all need to do, to love each other, to keep our families safe, to adjust our routines, to be a loving household, and to find a way to share that with others. It's not that hard, but it's so important. I remember a few years ago speaking to someone who was a cancer survivor. Eventually she succumbed to that many years later, but this was very soon after she had gone through the toughest days at that time. And I asked her how she was doing and she said her experience of having cancer was, she, this, here's how she put it. It was a transformative experience. And I thought, w what do you mean by that? It was transformative. And she said, well, people love me in ways I wouldn't have imagined. It clarified a lot of things in my life that I needed to get straight. It helped me let go of things that really were inconsequential to begin with. And I came out of it a better person. That's pretty extraordinary. Th that's pretty extraordinary. I'll share with you one final prayer request. This is, uh, this is quiet heroism. Bishop McClory, my wife of 63 years is in a nursing home with dementia. She does not know where she is and never talks about our home. She is on the ground floor, so I go every day and talk with her through the window. She does not understand why I cannot come in. I love her very much. Thanks for putting her in your prayers. The loving husband of 63 years finding a way to support his wife with dementia when she doesn't even know why he can't come in, using all the social distance, visiting her and praying for her and loving her. Uh, what's happening in our families is never gonna make all the headlines but it's a quiet heroism. It's heroism and hope in a time of suffering. It's Jesus bringing life and health in the midst of death. Jesus, I trust in you. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God and Father, we entrust these prayers to you. For the church throughout the world, especially in those places most affected by the COVID-19 virus, that she may be strengthened in hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick, that through the skills of doctors, their healthcare providers, and the continued love and support of their families and friends, that they may know healing and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all those who remember at this Mass today, most especially for those for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all those we remember at this Mass today and all those who have died, may they see the face of God this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Loving God and Father, we entrust these prayers to you, confident that you will hear and answer them. For we make these prayers through Christ who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, for all, blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed be God God forever. forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become, may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord Lord accept accept the sacrifice sacrifice at your hands hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our our good good and the good of all his holy Holy church. Church. Hear us, almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis our Pope and me your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, 
and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the, the Lord.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So as with uh, any Mass, we do have some announcements, and so uh, stay tuned until the very end, the final blessing, okay? Uh, first of all, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, we want to use this as a time to maintain spiritual closeness in an age of social distancing. So we do have some resources uh, to make sure that we can accomplish that. So a personal one that I've extended and I made reference to in my homily today is that uh, there's an email or on the website you can send me your prayer intentions. It's a way for us to be spiritually united while physically separated. So the email address is pray at dcgary.org pray at dcgary.org. So I'll be happy to pray for your prayer intentions. And as I offer the final uh, blessing, we'll lift up in prayer all those intentions that I've received thus far, the ones that I've continued to pray for. Uh, the other is that we are getting ready for Holy Week. So of course, next, Saturday, next Sunday uh, will be Palm Sunday. Uh, on our website, which is um, dcgary.org, you will find resources. We have some home liturgies that you can use for Palm Sunday, and those will be coming out for the rest of the week. In addition to watching here the live stream or the live stream of, of your local parish, we'll be offering some resources. So go to our website for that. Uh, we're also posting videos and some practical tips as to how you can dive deeper into uh, our prayer at this time. Also, you see on our Facebook page, uh, our Catholic charities are still at work. A number of our charitable outreaches are providing their ministry, you know, with all the proper protocols in place, uh, but continue to meet the needs of those who are suffering during this time. So you can go to our Facebook page uh, to read the ways that our Catholic charities continue to be involved. And of course, at the parish level, there are so many initiatives going on. Just a quick reminder that I've asked us to uh, use the time of noon and 6 p.m. to say two simple prayers. Jesus, I trust in you and Our Lady of Lords pray for us. At noon and six, Jesus, I trust in you and Our Lady of Lords pray for us. Uh, technology is important these days. Uh, we're using it to stay connected. So if you'd like to receive regular updates on our website, you can sign up for something called Flock Note, Flock Note, and then that will allow you to get immediate updates on what's happening here in the diocese as well as some spiritual resources. Um, Pope Francis tells us, Prayer and quiet service, these are our victorious weapons. Let's rely upon prayer and quiet service, united with Pope Francis and all men and women around the world, to use these victorious weapons to see hope in the midst of suffering, see heroism and new life. Let's use these days to draw closer to each other and closer to our Lord. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.